Uh, predictions are that the royal nuptials will give a much needed boost to the British economy, but they also come with a warning. The public holiday could cost business owners up to £6 billion. Pounds. Well, we'll get an idea of the strength of the UK's economic recovery in just under two hours from now. That's when first quarter GDP data will be released, while well, most economists surveyed by Bloomberg expect it to have grown by 0.5%. Well, that would be just enough to cancel out last quarter's contraction, which was caused by a winter cold snap. Now let's talk about this in more detail with George Buckley. He's chief UK economist at Deutsche Bank and joins me now in the studio. Thank you so much for Hello. joining us. Now we understand that actually the Chancellor saw the figures before and it's reported in the press this morning in newspapers that he says they're pretty much on track. Now what does that mean? It's difficult to say. The Chancellor gets these numbers about 24 hours before they're published. And I, probably, I suspect what he means is that they've actually grown. So we have seen the economy uh, rise, grow after the, the decline we saw in Q4. I think the big issue is that it's not the growth rate which is important, it's the fact that we are still so far below the peak level of GDP which we achieved back at the start of 2008, which isn't true for a lot of other countries. So can we just say that basically the underlying growth in the UK is non-existent even if we don't fall back into recession with this number today? Well in the middle of 2010 we actually saw some relatively good uh, GDP prints, I mean they were on average around about 0.8-0.9%. Uh, uh, now they've come to flat, if we get a 0.5% in two hours time then the average is going to be zero for around the turn of the year, which is not a very encouraging number at all. Is there a risk that actually we fall back into a recession this year? Is, is this what you're predicting? Well, of course, economists were expecting a 0.5% increase in Q4. Wow. We got a 0.5% decrease. If the same happens then today, we are already in recession. I don't think that's going to be the case. We're on 0.5%. The consensus is looking for a half percent increase. But that's still very weak relative to the drop that we saw at the end of last year. But is there a cost of panic? Let's say that today we do get actually a negative mm -hmm. number. We have a lot of inflation. What will the Bank of England do? D does it make that much difference that, you know, 0. To negative or positive? Well, I mean, the, the markets have already been pricing out the chance of a move in August. I mean, the, the, they're still looking for a move in August, but it's only around about 50% priced. It's only 100% priced by the time you get to November. So it's a long time. And at the start of this year, the markets were pricing in maybe three or four interest rate increases, same as they were at the start of 2010. And remember what happened then? They priced all of them out. We didn't get any increase at all. So what the Bank of England would do would just simply wait a little bit longer. Is it a mistake to wait? Uh, it depends what the, the data comes in. Like if, if, if we see continued weak data and we don't see this recovery, then maybe it isn't a mistake to wait. But inflation is very high and they've got to think about doing something to address that as well. Uh, George, how much of an impact, of course, does it have what we're seeing over in China and in the US? The UK, of course, is not a, an insular economy. How much more difficult does it make to set its own policy depending on the US doing QE3, mm -hmm. for example? Well, this is a point that Andrew Sentence made yesterday. He talked about the fact that our economy has a huge export and import sector. We export and import about 60% in total of our GDP. When you look at the US, it's less than half of that. So what does happen in the global economy can have serious repercussions for, for the UK economy. So all of the risks that we're seeing, whether it be the euro area crisis, whether it be um, Fed policy, whether it be Japan, whether it be North Africa, all of these are serious risks to GDP growth in the future. Let's say that today in less than two hours we actually find out that we are in a recession. Does it mean that the government policies have just been wrong, that we have to back off the austerity measures? Not necessarily because I think you do see very volatile recoveries after recessions. You go back to the 1980s, we saw exceptionally volatile GDP. If you look at it on a chart, it doesn't look particularly volatile, but it was. And I, I think that's the issue, that you don't tend to see very smooth recoveries. They do tend to be uh, all over the place. And it could be the case that that's just simply a, uh, a one-off one -off, uh, decline. But if we did get a, a fall today, that would be quite a, a, a big issue because two back-to-back -back falls is, is not a pleasant uh, outcome at all. And if we did have a recession after the number today, what would be your number one advice to the government? Well, I think they have to continue with the fiscal fiscal tightening because if they don't, we'll see <clears throat> we'll see interest rates increase um, potentially quite significantly in the markets, and they don't want that because that could also uh, limit the recovery. George, thank you so much, George Buckley. There. Thanks.